There have been requests for military assistance by both Ontario and Quebec, which of course we will be answering. Our women and men in uniform will step up with the valour and courage they have always shown. In the short term, we will be there with support so that provinces can get control of this situation. But this is not a long-term solution. In Canada, we shouldn't have soldiers taking care of seniors. Going forward, in the weeks and months to come, we will all have to ask tough questions about how it came to this. We will all have to do more to get through this terrible situation. The feds have agreed to send troops into Quebec and Ontario to help with their long-term care crises. In Quebec, more than 80% of COVID-19 deaths are seniors in care. Former Quebec Health Minister Dr. Gaetan Barrett joined me earlier this week. Have a listen. Hi, Dr. Barrett. Good to see you. My pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my understanding is that you are actually working uh, at least some of the time in, in one of these Sayash SLDs, one of these homes. What can you tell us about your experience so far? Well, uh, it is true there is a, that there is a lack of personnel and uh, that this is a difficult time for them. But surprisingly, uh, maybe not surprisingly, actually, uh, those who are still there, I'm talking about personnel and, and residents there, uh, the morale is quite good uh, in the way that, you know, they are there for the good reason uh, and they're ready to, uh, to go on a daily basis. So where I am going to, uh, things are going well. Based on your experience there, but also more broadly speaking, your experience in your previous portfolio, what do you think is at the heart of why this has been such a crisis in these homes in Quebec? Well, I cannot uh, tell for other provinces, but in, in this province, there was, uh, let's put it that way, um, uh, 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 how should I put it, uh, recommendations that, w that, that went from government were such that people were not allowed early enough to use uh, the PPEs, protection, personal protection equipment, at the beginning. Because at the beginning, it was thought that there was no within community uh, uh, contagion, and obviously that wasn't true. So on a, in a situation like this, on day one and maybe day zero, if I, if I may, uh, everybody should have been wearing a mask, at least, including patients. And that was not the case. So one thing uh, leading to the other, you got one case, two days later, you had three cases, 20 cases, and so on. So that being uh, seen, let's put it that way, a lot of personnel decided to not present themselves. So we are uh, lacking personnel as we speak today by fear of contracting the virus. So it's a staffing issue you think right now? Totally. Uh, well, the good thing that we are having to, that we're seeing today is that there's more personnel coming in. At the facility where I work myself, uh, I do night shifts most of the time. I do weekends and night shifts, not tonight, but because tonight there was enough people. So I was working last night, for instance, with people, uh, assistant nurses that came from elsewhere, uh, teachers, uh, primary school teachers that were there, two of them with me uh, to provide uh, very simple care. But that is needed, uh, and that, that gives some uh, leeway to the regular personnel to do their uh, more uh, specific work. So there is no small gesture. Everybody who's there really adds up. It's really something positive. But I, I work with people coming from uh, many, many areas, and that's a good thing. Dr. Barrett, some analysis in the province has pointed to health reforms brought in under your, your party when it was in government and under you when you were uh, serving in the health portfolio, uh, that they, they assert created uh, too much, a level of bureaucracy that was too great to respond to what was happening quickly enough. What do you say to that criticism? You know, when people don't show at work, uh, it's not about bureaucracy. It's about the crisis, period. You don't judge uh, normal, quote unquote, normal situation from what's happening in a crisis situation. And let me, let me give you an example that I lived two days ago. Two days ago in a facility where that is close to where I was uh, working at, the talk of the night was that facility where, because there's been one death reported within uh, orderlies personnel uh, in the area, 
the, the whole night shift, evening shift, I'm sorry, the whole shift didn't present to work. That is not about bureaucracy. That is about human factor by which people do not present work. So when the total shift uh, is not presenting themselves, well, you have to ask the, 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 the people uh, on the day shift to stay at, uh, for the evening. This is not something that is really uh, appealing to those who are willing to come back. So those circumstances are a crisis situation and it has nothing to do with what's been done before, except for the fact that when I was there, I recommended and I put everything in place that was supposed to be implemented uh, the next term, very simply put. We wanted to increase the number of personnel on the floors and their salary. Everything, everything has been put in place and it was not uh, implemented. And that's certainly uh, a very strong factor of what we're what we are living now today in Quebec. So when uh, when we look ahead, because uh, you know many have remarked about how uh, not just in Quebec but in other provinces, particularly in Ontario, there will have to be some questions asked about the system. I take your point on staffing. I take your point about it being a crisis situation, but the system as a whole moving forward and how it might deal with crisis situations in the future. Uh, what do you think, for example, the role of the federal government needs to be, or what it's specifically does the provinces do the provinces need to re-examine after this is over it's, it's it's a quite simple situation everything regarding long-term care in this country are not on the top of the list of priorities period when i was in office i estimated and, and very seriously we went around and said how much would it cost to do the right thing to do all the things as properly as we do in a hospital setting and that the conclusion was very simple. We would have had to increase healthcare budget by 12%. Today in Quebec, in this province, it would mean to increase our annual recurrent budget by $5 billion. Are we ready to do that? I put that on my Twitter account many, many times. Even today, after this, will we be ready? And that goes for the federal government too. Will we be ready to put the proper amount of money in order to do things as well in terms of quantity and quality as well as what we do in hospitals? That's the question. The question, and the answer is a number. We know what to do. Uh, we know how much we need to fund, but funding it's a different thing, and it's a partnership theoretically with Ottawa. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Dr. Barrett. Appreciate your time. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.